Hey guys, this is HTL Mario, and I'm going to be showing you a Terran against Brados game. I've shown you quite a few Terran against Terran and Terran against Zerg recently, so I want to show you a Brados game I played on stream today. I uh, I pick a few games occasionally now and then from stream um, if they're good games, and I you know when I don't do commentary, so if it pr just provides more insight into what I was thinking and provides great learning opportunities. So in this specific game, I go for mech. Surprise! <laughs> Not really. I mech every game, as most of you know. And um, in this one, you'll see a Tempest switch, when I was already maxed out on anti-ground. And I do believe you'll see nukes. I do believe that is this game. So what we're going at is 10 supply depot, 12 barracks, and this is your supply in the top right corner, 12 barracks, 13 refinery. This is, an, and then another supply depot, because we'll be able to go ahead and uh, delay our marine in just a moment. You know, we're going to kind of scare him away, pull the supply depot, get our orbital command, and then a reactor. Oh, we're going to get a Reaper first, sorry, then a Reactor. We're putting a Bunker down at his base. This is kind of just to pressure him, force him to stop mining. If you look at the income right now, I'm about 100 minerals ahead. And I cancel it, get the worker out of there. It cost me about 25 minerals. cost him a lot more minerals. So it's, it was, it's a good thing to do, uh, especially if they overreact. They could just pull like one worker and try to kill the SUV, so one or two workers, and then the impact wouldn't be nearly as bad. Now when the Reaper goes out, we're going to go ahead and drop our expansion, so the Reaper will be able to scout any cheese. Um, it'll tell us uh, what's going on, so if we can play greedy, if we need to cancel the expo, if we need to you know, move it to the high ground right away, uh, he's just there to gather information more than anything. So the longer he stays alive, the more information we have. I do try to do a little bit of pressure, but I'm avoiding the Mothership Core. Uh, they're pretty good, good against Reapers since Reapers don't shoot up. Back at home, I'm getting a factory and two Marines at a time. So the reason why we get the reactor on the barracks is so we can produce a lot of Marines for defense. And the Marines go on bunkers. Uh, they're good against Oracle, Stargate. Uh, early robotics facility like uh, Immortals, Marines are pretty good against that. And then you get a factory for Widow Mines, so you can help prevent against Oracle's uh, gateway rushes that don't have detection. So the Widow Mines are pretty good against that. You only want two with a bunker going down in the front, so we can place our Marines in the bunker and you know defend our expo easier. Kind of scouting around, and I see. Okay, it's a. Uh, it's pretty standard. It's a nexus, and I see this is a gateway. This is another gateway. So it's three gateway expo. I see sentry, so I'm not terribly worried. Um, I feel pretty comfortable in what's going on. You know, I I know that you can probably do like three gate pressure. So other than that, he might have like a hidden star gate. But so far, it looks like it's gonna turn out to be a normal game. So I'm just gonna go ahead and continue to kind of play it normal and drop another starport. I'm going to drop I mean I drop a starport and then once I drop the starport I get a second gas. This will allow me to go ahead and get ravens kind of early on and then an engineering bay just in case it's oracle and I do move a widow mine into my mineral line uh, in case it's a delayed oracle so that the oracle you know might fly into the widow mine, and I try to surprise him with the stalker. If he's not paying attention, I can get it, but I was paying attention and I moved back out. And then move this widow mine kind of up front so he can keep a, an eye out. And here's a mothership core, and you can see that it took a lot of damage, so it now has to go away. It can't pressure my SCVs. Uh, it's pretty close to dying, and I didn't even bother sending units because I knew that he'd just move out right away. And then I get a missile turret. Uh, one in the main, and not one yet at the natural. Uh, the one in the main is in case of drops, maybe Dark Templar, Oracle, Void Ray, Phoenix, Harass, you know, so there's a few reasons why you should get this. Uh, you can go without it, but it's just, it makes me feel a lot safer getting this one single missile turret and then moving the Oracle, 
the Widow Mine to a different location. I'm going to try to surprise him again, but he's paying really good attention and backs off immediately, so I just head back. Uh, back in the factory on the starport, I'm making a raven and a siege tank. So the raven is in case of Dark Templar, it's in case of a lot of stalkers, it can do Hunter Seeker Missile, it can do Harass, it can do Point Defense Drones. I get double gas so that I can go up to several factories right away and then into a third command center. So sometimes I switch it up third command center first, then several factories, but you're, you're much safer going for two more factories. And, um, before going for two more factories, and then the third order will command is if you play greedy. So uh, I I do actually end up throwing it down here because I, there's a timing window where he can push it like nine minutes and twenty seconds with a bunch of gateway units, and it passed. So I don't need the gateways just yet. I mean the factories just yet. So I go ahead and drop the command center and then two factories. I have a pretty large gas surplus. So I get a banshee, maybe try to harass him a little bit. More siege tanks, more marines. So we're sending this raven out to uh, Hunter Seeker Missile, his workers. Since we've seen no sign of air attack, he should be relatively safe in poking in and out, unless he has like Blink Stalker or has been hiding Stargate, which is definitely something I want to be aware of in advance. And then we move our barracks and our starboard over so we can get up to a total of two tech labs one reactor on our factory units here's a hundred seeker missile and we go ahead and get out of there and we only end up getting oh we actually end up getting eight kills that surprised me I wasn't aware of that so that one hundred seeker missile actually killed eight workers so very very worth it it's just trading it for energy and we also saw a storm. Uh, we saw a Templar, so that's definitely good. Now we know what kind of tech he's going. We're throwing on two more factories. Going up to five factories because we'll be grabbing a third soon. Using this Banshee to scout when he gets his third. Trying to slow it from going down. You know, kill the probe. But we don't have to... You never have to overcommit with any unit. As long as it can do something that is worth its cost, uh, you can justify getting it. So, like, if you can justify getting it, then it's definitely... and use it for what you justified it to do so then it's definitely worth it so in this case it's to kind of harass the third uh, force unnecessary resources being spent um, I get plus one attack I get two more command centers as I fly out take my third in the middle because this gives me a lot of map control and then I can take the back expansion kind of safely this also puts me in a more aggressive position in case I want to go attack him I'm getting a reactor for my starport, and I'm producing three Hellbats right now, three siege tanks. I can produce, I don't have a second reactor for my, for my, uh, factories. They're just tech labs, so I can dump a lot of gas into siege tanks if need be, and then just use, uh, factories with tech labs to make Hellbats if I have too much of a mineral surplus and not enough gas. This allows me to dump my gas even faster. And then uh, after I get a reactor for the starport, I'm going to be go ahead and getting a ghost academy and another armory so I can get double upgrades and get ready to EMP him. You know, the Templar that we saw earlier. We're also, since we've established a third, uh, we're putting more of a, a basis on a turret ring to help stop drop harass. Uh, we've killed three workers now and he's warping in two stalkers over there. So we go ahead and just get out. We're just poking whenever we can. Uh, little widow mines at the bottom of each ramp. So widow mine here, widow mine here. Uh, this lets me see when he pokes out. Uh, if he doesn't kill these, so he doesn't. Ha we know he doesn't have a detector, or he would have cleared this. And let's take a look around. Starting up a bit of a depot wall, so we can close this off. And here comes a, a hellbat drop. This this one of mine hasn't gotten any kills, but I think he's he's really hurt this immortal. And that's definitely good. Going in here, zooming in, and he does end up killing it with a feedback. And I do think I get a few worker kills, not too many. 
And then poking around with this bench over here, do you have the space? What's going on? I actually have more workers than the Protoss, and that's something I shouldn't have. I mean, you know, that's bad for him, good for me. And now I'm going to go ahead and take out the, get this base, because yeah, I have a, a normal command that's uh, capable of doing so, getting two more barracks, because I want to go up to three barracks, five factories, three uh, starports. That's kind of my goal. And then deviate from there, do I want more air? Throw down another two starports or so. Do I want more ground? Throw down uh, another few factories. And then the three barracks are for ghosts. Uh, you want to be able to get quite a decent ghost count. Uh, he can make a lot of Templar, and you want him to be able to make quite a few ghosts at the same time as well. So three or four barracks seems to be the prime key. And then I queue my workers to build a command center here, so I can make a planetary missile turret here, so I can get Dark Templar, and the planetary can attack any Templar attacking the wall, as long as I get missile turret range, which I will later on. Uh, attacking the wall without being able to snipe this missile turret. Then a wall, so he can't just go in without... Killing a supply depot, which means he's going to be under fire from a planetary, and then to really deny the space, he's going to have to kill off the planetary. And then... This makes me pretty safe. He's got to go now through this entrance to attack through here, unless he sends his whole army, which I will be able to tell, because I have sensor towers on the map, one here and one here. This allows me to see a good chunk of, he of uh, this angle, you know? I can see exactly... Uh, if he's coming through this door, which I could see anyway because I have the watchtower, but then I can see him walk up this ramp, and I can kind of see him walk up this ramp halfway, but I also have a widow mine here, and I can see him really close to this ramp, so I can't be too surprised. And I do another hellbat drop here, but that does get shut down, but I kill another few workers, so I'm not at 20, so uh, worker kills. He's at 2, so he's at 60 workers, I'm at 80. Definitely good for me. Another command center here because I want to build this as a planetary fortress to defend this base uh, from Zedlet Runbys or Dark Templar while I'm gone. Uh, two more missile turrets here, so War Prism can't harass here. And he did try to throw in a War Prism, but we killed it. Uh, you know, he he's now has three zealots in here and I let him kill my SCVs it doesn't bother me because I have a lot of SCVs and I have a lot of orbital commands and I'm actually making one two three more because I have a, a surplus of minerals and this does free up some supply so in the later stage of the game you want to trade SCVs for mules you want to hover at about 40 SCVs uh, even less if you can manage it depending on how many resources are left on the map well, you know but uh, this even up the worker count, it actually isn't this big of a deal because now we've had we have the economy to make the orbital commence, and that's why we got up to so many SCVs so we can have the economy to get the orbital commands for mule drops because every orbital command is uh, is a uh, every mule is four SCVs. So now that this planetary is going in, uh, we he was kind of scanned his army and we saw okay you've got uh, we didn't see the tempest but we see okay you've got. Uh, Templar, you've got Immortal, you're getting this base. We were actually unaware that the, he had this base, so he double expanded. Kind of, uh. He took this base sooner than we thought. We scanned there and we're like, oh, okay. And we see Tempest here, and I'm like, okay, I could back off, but I'm maxed out, so I'd have to get rid of some of the units anyway. So I decided to attack, EMP his army, drop some point defense drone to stop his Tempest from attacking and my goal here is to lose some units and take out his Grand Army since Tempest shoot uh, slow and I have some point defense drones down it's not I'm not taking terrible damage like if you look at the units lost yeah I, I've lost more than him but um, it's kind of fluctuating a little bit right now kind of even and we're backing up we've now freed, freed up a lot of supply we had a lot of bank and this allows us, we, we drop some extra starport once we notice the the Tempest, uh, four starports, and now we're producing Vikings, Ghosts, Thors, and double upgrades, still finishing up these upgrades. And pulling back to here, uh, our little safe spot, we're dropping two command centers here with a few missile turrets, gas geysers, and a, sense, a radar tower so we can see units coming up trying to attack here. And you know, just in case maybe there's like a pylon over here that I'm unaware of, or maybe like a war prism flying through. And the double planetary fortress will make it so we have to defend this a lot less than what we normally would have. We haven't gotten building armor yet, which is something I should get uh, to make the planetary fortresses more durable. And I can drop mules here. Uh, so now we're kind of on an even basis, and I do know he's coming over here to attack, but I can't quite engage him yet. I am waiting for some more Vikings. 
and I scan just to make sure to see what's there, and I see quite a few High Templar and a Tempest Army. His upgrades are 022, and mine are 20, so uh, they're for armor, but Tempest do a lot of damage, so attack might have actually been more beneficial, but I I uh, don't finish my plus attack for ground weapons until now, so now I'll begin air production for, you know, upgrades the attack. Alright, now um, we poked it a little bit over here to kind of force him to retreat. Uh, we don't want him attacking over here, and we rebuild our turret ring so that no war prism can go through, so he's delayed even more. And he's attacking over here, remove our army back, but we send our ghosts up in just a second. So here come our ghosts. And uh, we scan so we know that he's got no detector, and we EMP his whole army, and we snipe a few of the Templar, and now uh, we actually impede a few of the the Tempest, so we, he can't do storms, so our, I don't have to worry about splash damage on my Vikings unless he's using Archons to splash damage them. And I pull back, and you can see that I'm making, uh, again, a few more ghosts. He killed this barrack, so I threw down two more barracks over here, so I can make more ghosts at a time. Uh, making a lot of Vikings, a few more Thors, and income wise it's pretty even I've gone back up to 80 workers and he's gone up to 90 so I was I was kind of low on minerals so I wanted to get a few more workers I wasn't able to keep up keep producing more orbital commands because I needed the money right away to build an army so I made a few SCVs to re climb back up and then make more orbital commands and then sacrifice more SCVs so it's kind of even and here come the more orbital commands that I was talking about so three more, and then once this goes through, I can take a few SCVs, and here they are. So, um, you know, I'm using them to repair my army. Instead of blindly giving them away, I use them with my army to attack, so my army has more overall HP, because the SCVs are repairing it. Scan ahead, so I know where his army is, what he's doing. And he, do he now does have plus three attack, and his Tempest do quite a bit of damage. So in this fight, uh, we send the ghosts up front. Once again we scanned, we see no detector, we scan again just to make sure, check his army positioning, make sure nothing's hiding. And we EMP all of the Templar, and quite a few of the Tempest, so now he's forced to r really run away. We've killed the Archon with the Ghost, because he didn't have any EMPs left. I mean, uh, he, he didn't have any shields left because of all the EMPs, and now we're kind of uh, walking in here, placing our siege tanks to shell the base. And uh, our SCVs are still repairing, and then our, go our medevacs are healing the ghosts. And when the Thors are in high impact mode because, you know, he's using Tempest. If it was Void Race, it'd be an explosive payload so they could splash the Void Race. We are taking up this space back home. We're building uh, ghost academies. We're getting our orbital commands. We're building Thors, Hellbats, because he's probably going to try to remax on Dark Templar or... And here they are. You can see the Shimmer, so I scan. Let's try to remax on Dark Templar or Zealot really fast, try to get a few out to overcome this army. Because there are no Hellbats, so uh, that's why we're, we were building some, just a few, right now. And we do end up taking out this base, and then killing this Dark Shrine is pretty big, because then I don't have to worry about Dark Templar anymore. Uh, I mean, he could probably rebuild it somewhere else, but this does take some resources. And I'm killing a lot of workers that are attacking this base, which is actually good for him, because he had way too many workers, and now he can't support this many. And I do EMP. He feeds back my medevacs, but I do EMP his ghost, so it's kind of a, an even trade, but uh, he wasn't able to get any storms off. And over here, he's attacking, but... But we do decide to back up at this stage, because I don't want to chase down the, the Tempest and keep facing off his his uh, warp ins and stuff like that without my reinforcements. And I'm producing some ravens, some nukes, and then uh, ship weapons to make my air army a little bit stronger. The nukes are, uh, and the nukes are to kind of nuke either his army uh, defensively or nuke some of his bases, and then the medevacs are to help me get to the bases. So they can heal the ghost, they can heal the hellbats, and they can drop me in the middle of his base so I can nuke and force his army out of position because they will do a lot of damage. I see him go up here, uh, which doesn't bother me. I kill. I wipe this out, 
and then I kind of pull back a little bit, and then he pulls back up. I had a missile turret here scouting to see if he would get this space, and I had a widow mine here seeing if he would get this space. And now I've established this space because I, I know that he's going to have a hard time remaxing. He's got to secure this space right here, which he is trying to re-get. So I want to mine out of here as much as I can. So I drop mule so I don't have to mule my own resources. So I have more resources uh, back at my, you know, back in my bases. So if he ends up killing this, I still can, you know, mine out over here. And it's extra gas too, which is huge because I'm making a lot of ghosts and making a lot of ravens and nukes cost a lot of gas and so do upgrades and I'm getting a few more vikings so the ravens are for point defense drones, hunter seeker missile, they're just really good against tempest uh, if you have something to kill the tempest they help you buy time against tempest basically and we go up here and we've got this medevac over here that's gonna go ahead and drop ghost into uh, attack we go stealth and he does have an observer, but they're not quite close to... I mean, they're not far up. It's kind of in the back. So I was able to get EMP off on his whole army. And point defense drones here. So um, my army isn't taking much damage because most of his army consists of stalkers and tempests. So they're all affected by t point defense drones except for like the Archon. He's able to take on a lot of the Vikings, but I have SEVs here to repair the Thors, just a few. And I drop mu uh, nukes on his production facilities. This gets rid of his gateways. Uh, not all of them, but it also stops his Stargate from being powered. So go ahead, let's go ahead and take a look at this, because the battle down there is spreading over. And then we drop two more nukes to wipe this out. So now he's not making any more uh, detectors, he's not making immortals. Uh, he's not making air units, and he's losing quite a few gateways. So he's actually losing quite a bit back in his main. You know, he, he's he doesn't have quite as much money. I have a bigger bank. Uh, he can't remax anymore because he's losing all of his production facilities. We have more nukes at the the base, you know, building. And thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed watching this game.